science and technology in the Philippines represents the wide scientific and technological advances the Philippines has made. The main managing agency responsible for science and technology is the Department of Science and Technology or known as the DOST. The Science Department have consulting agencies for forestry, agriculture and aquaculture, metal industry, nuclear research, food and nutrition, health, meteorological and volcanology, and seismology. Numerous national scientists have contributed in different fields of science, including Fedel Mundo in the field of pediatrics, Eduardo Kisimbing in the field of plant taxonomy, and Maria Orosa in the field of food technology. Moving forward, all the discoveries and the developments at different administrations had led to more knowledge and advancements in the field of science. More scientists rose to invent and apply science for the betterment of our society and our country. Now, let's take a look on how the following presidents contributed in science and technology and how they shaped our nation. During Ferdinand Marcos' presidency, the importance given to science grew. In the amended 1972 Philippine Constitution, Article 15, Section 9, he declared that the advancement of science and technology shall have priority in the national development. In his two terms of presidency and during martial law, he enacted many laws promoting science and technology. In his second State of the Nation address, he declared that science was necessary for the development programs and thus directed the Department of Education to revitalize the science courses in public high schools. The Department of Education together with the National Science Development Board is organizing a project to provide selected high schools with science teaching equipment over a four-year period. In his seventh State of the Nation address, he spoke about his major development projects in reforming sectors of education. Such projects included research and development schools, technical institutes, science education centers, and agricultural colleges and vocational high schools. In 1972, he created the National Greens Authority to provide for the development of the rice and corn industry to fully harness it for the economy of the country. He provided further support for the promotion of scientific research and invention with Presidential Decree No. 49 dated 1972. This decree contains details on the protection of intellectual property for the creator or publisher of the work. He established the Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration under the Department of National Defense to provide environmental protection and to utilize scientific knowledge to ensure the safety of the people. In 1973, he created the Philippine National Oil Company to promote industrial and economic development through effective and efficient use of energy sources. In 1978, he created a task force on the formulation of a national action program on science and technology to assess policies and programs of science and technology. In 1986, during Corazon Aquino's presidency, the National Science and Technology Authority was replaced by the Department of Science and Technology, giving science and technology a representation in the cabinet. On August 8, 1988, Corazon Aquino created the Presidential Task Force for Science and Technology, which came up with the first Science and Technology Master Plan or STMP. The goal of STMP was for the Philippines to achieve newly industrialized country status by the year 2000, and which aimed at modernization of the production sector, upgrading research activities, and development of infrastructure for science and technological purposes. RA-6655 or the Free Public Secondary Education Act of 1988 opened doors to free education up to the secondary level, implemented in the education system together with this was the Science for the Masses program, which aimed at scientific and technological literacy among Filipinos. Latino administration recognized the importance of science and technology in the development of the Philippines into a newly industrialized country. Funding for the science and technology sector was tripled from $464 million in 1986 to $1.7 billion in 1992. Fidel V. Ramos believes that science and technology was one of the means wherein the Philippines could attain the status of new industrialized country. 
During his term, he was able to establish programs that were significant to the field of science and technology. At 1998, the Philippines was estimated to have around 3,000 competent scientists and engineers. Adding to the increase of scientists would be the result of the two newly built Philippine Science High Schools in Visayas and Mindanao, which promotes further development of young kids through advanced science and technology curriculum. Healthcare services were promoted through local programs such as Doctors to the Barrio program. The healthcare programs were innovative and effective as shown by the change in life expectancy from 67.5 years in 1992 to 69.1 years in 1995. In 1993, Science and Technology Agenda for National Development was established. Among its priorities were exporting winners identified by the DTI, domestic needs identified by the President's Council for Countryside Development, support industries, and coconut industry development. Congress during his term was able to enact laws that were significant for the field. Among were Magna Carta for Science and Technology Personnel, Science and Technology Scholarship Law of 1994, and Inventors and Inventions Incentives Act. The Intellectual Property Code of the Philippines was enacted during Ramos' term. This law provides industrial property rights, copyrights and related rights, and technology transfer arrangements. In President Joseph Estrada's term, two major legislations that he signed were Philippine Clean Air Act of 1999, which was designed to protect and preserve the environment and ensure the sustainable development of its natural resources, and Electronic Commerce Act of 2000, which outlaws computer hacking and provides opportunities for new businesses emerging from the internet-driven new economy. Aside from this, in his first State of the Nation address, President Estrada launched a full-scale program based on cost-effective irrigation technologies. He also announced that dole outs are out, which meant basic health care, basic nutrition, and useful education for those who want but cannot afford it. Lastly, he said that they should speed up the program to establish one science high school in every province. In the Gloria Macapagal Arroy administration, the science and technology sector of the Philippines was dubbed as a golden age of science and technology by then Secretary Estrella Albastro. Numerous laws and projects that concerns both the environment and science helps to push technology as a tool to increase the country's economic level. This is to help increase the productivity from science, technology, and innovations and help benefit the poor people. Moreover, the term Philippine innovation was the coined term used in helping the Philippines to be an innovation hub in Asia. The STI was developed further by strengthening the schools and education system, such as the Philippine Science High School, which focuses in science, technology, and mathematics in their curriculum. One of the more known laws to be passed by her administration was the RA9367 or the Biofuels Act. This act promotes the development and usage of biofuels throughout the country. This potentially enables a cheaper alternative to gasoline as a medium in producing energy. Also, this benefits the environment since it boasts a cleaner emission compared to regular fuel. In an effort to improve the efficiency of both land and water, the government imposes RA10601 which improves the agriculture and fishery sector through mechanization. During President Aquino's term, Moses Tab was used. It is a tablet that is capable of receiving real-time weather and flood information reports from DOST Pag-asa and Project NOAA. That local officials down to the barangay level can access accurate decision-making to prevent massive destruction and casualties. Also, the Philippine government launched the Duwata One or Microsatellite One which is equipped with four specialized cameras and it is expected to provide 3,500 high-resolution images that will be used for monitoring land and study the weather changes. In 2014, President Aquino conferred four new national scientists for their contribution in the scientific field. Academicians Gavino C. Trono, Angel C. Alcala, Ramon C. Barba, and Edgardo D. Gomez was honored in their respective fields. President Duterte signs Republic Act No. 11035, also known as Act Institutionalizing the Balik Scientist Program. 
it would give more incentives to returning Filipino experts, scientists, inventors, and engineers who would share their expertise in the country. He also authorized the Philippine Space Agency that will coordinate with all the government space-related activities and policy, which are currently spread across multiple agencies. Also, the Philippine government launched the second Philippine microsatellite or Diwata 2, which takes advantage of radio communication technology by carrying an amateur radio payload for disaster relief purposes.